Hey, this is Nat, and we're off our couch one final time for now in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. This is our last video of our Fort Lauderdale trip at the end of May, and we have had a wonderful time exploring the Venice of America and the yachting capital of the world, Fort Lauderdale. We're not done exploring yet because now we are at Los Olas Boulevard, a popular, well-known South Florida destination. And be sure to subscribe because once we leave Fort Lauderdale, we'll be in Destin, Florida for the next few videos and discovering some new places uh, places that are new to us at least so yeah subscribe and check that out with us too so we are on Las Olas Boulevard now this is where you can eat drink shop browse art there's a lot of things to do a lot of variety on Las Olas Boulevard we first began checking out the boulevard by driving it and getting an idea about all that's available on the boulevard and then we set out by foot to get a closer and more intimate look there's a water taxi stop here, of course, to take you to the shops and restaurants of Las Olas Boulevard. Stop number two. The water taxi provides narrated tours as you hop on and off at one of their 10 stops, or you can just enjoy a round trip tour on the famous waterways of Fort Lauderdale, learn about the stunning mansions, luxurious yachts, and the history of South Florida. However you arrive to Las Olas Boulevard, you'll find that shops, fashion boutiques, art galleries, restaurants, cafes, and bars all line Las Olas Boulevard. This shop, the most interesting shop I've ever seen, is Unique Treasures, a collectible shop that looks absolutely amazing. Every time you pass it, I notice something different. We didn't venture in. It looks like a shop I could get lost in for hours. And we're hungry, so it's time to eat. We've seen lots of restaurants we want to try and a lot of enticing menus and offers. I like how many of the menus are outside the restaurants to make the excruciating task of choosing a place to eat just a little bit easier. We did decide on a place that looks and sounds enticing, El Camino. This is a Mexican soul food restaurant. I love the sound of that, and for me, there's no better combination than margaritas and sunshine. It is a beautiful sunny day here in Fort Lauderdale, and surprise, surprise, we're actually here for a happy hour. And El Camino has $5 margaritas and more than one flavor that sounds interesting. I'm starting with a classic margarita. London is being adventurous and trying a blood orange margarita. And then we're diving into the rest of this happy hour goodness. We're gonna try quite a few different items. I think that's the point of happy hour, to sample and dabble around the menu. And these prices are perfect for dabbling and sampling. We have brisket quesadillas, carnitos tacos, a chorizo taco, a gringo taco, and a tamale. And that big beautiful pot of cheese you see on the table is a fundido. Nachos are our go-to for the kids when we eat Mexican, and this is the closest they have. So this is a cheese skillet with gooey melted cheese filled with peppers. My kids do not like the peppers, so my maternal duty is to eat the nachos that pulled up peppers with the cheese. And this is the most delicious part of parenting. <laughs> Everything has been so good, beyond tasty. We are going to grab one last margarita to wash it down. I'm being really adventurous now and ordering a watermelon jalapeno margarita. If it's too spicy for me, London volunteered to drink the rest of it. He's just selfless like that. <laughs> this is so good and so unique. I can smell the jalapeno as I lift my cup to drink. And then I get to taste the tequila, smoked sea salt, and the watermelon juice. Just wonderful. The drinks are phenomenal. The food is absolutely fantastic. We're receiving excellent service from Claudio, our server. And the ambience and the environment here is just nice and relaxed. It's an open restaurant, so the air and the sunshine comes through while you eat. And the birds do too. <laughs> They're enjoying the environment as well. The music playing in the restaurant is upbeat and fun. And as I'm walking along the bar, it just shows more of the restaurant's flavor and personality. We all love the experience and would love to come back. Now we received recommendations for two other delicious places to eat from fellow YouTuber, Neil Capote. He does some interesting and entertaining travel and experience videos. And the link to his channel is in the description box so you can check out his visits to our next spot, Sistrump Marketplace and Brewery, and also Henry's, as well as his other videos. So now we're wandering around Sistrump Marketplace and Brewery and what to choose, what to choose. The Marketplace offers over 10 different eateries. Uh, luckily, we do have plenty of time to choose because we arrived right at four. 
Uh, they do open at four o'clock on Wednesdays and Thursdays, um, but many of the eateries don't start serving until 4.30 or five. Once you scan the QR code that is on the card, which is at the table, then you can see the eateries menus and you can also place your order for your food on that site. Once the eatery is visible on this site, then you know that they're open to take orders. Senbazuru Asian Fusion Tapas is open for business and we see a few different items we'd like to try. They have a rather interesting and attractive menu and we're sharing a seafood dashi shoyu ramen bowl and Korean barbecue wings. Isn't this beautiful? All the colors, the steam rising from the bowl, those succulent shrimp. Oh, we just can't wait to dive in. But first we need to split the bowl, get my fair share, and then it's finally time to enjoy. And it's so good. What you see is what you get. It looks delicious, it tastes delicious, and the chicken wings just wonderful. Great flavor, juicy, spicy, but not too spicy. My mouth isn't on fire while I eat, which is good because I want to joyfully experience all of these flavors. This place is perfect if you have a group with various tastes and interests. I believe there's a little bit of everything in here. And London is curious about the bar in the center of the marketplace and is actually named Center Bar. <laughs> I had the pleasure of trying an elderflower martini. Feels really light, highly refreshing. My first time having this drink, I really like it. London is having an old fashioned made with Maker's Mark and they shake their old fashions here and we get to observe the construction of this drink. In addition to a full bar, there is also a brewery, Kaufner Brewery specializes in handcrafted lagers, ales, stouts, and hard ciders. They have 40 home beers on tap. Definitely want to try one and I actually get to try three because I'm having a beer cocktail, which is a combination of pineapple cream ale, basil pilsner, and a smoked wheat ale. The different beers make a really good team. The combination has a smooth and enjoyable taste. Uh, Lud and I are full, but we're tagging the kids in to try out dessert. They're here just for sweets, to be honest, and there's plenty to indulge in at Kasai and Kaori. Bear with me, please. That is my best attempt at pronouncing the name. Uh, it is an Asian-inspired dessert bar. These are traditional Asian treats with a North American twist. All the items available are eye-catching. The desserts all deserve a second glance. And the taiyaki waffle cones that the kids have decided on are enthralling. And listen to the list of ingredients that they chose. Chocolate and vanilla swirl ice cream, cinnamon toast crunch, fizzy cotton candy, caramel sauce, and Heath Bar. Uh, that's my son's waffle cone. And my daughter's waffle cone is chocolate and vanilla swirl ice cream, fizzy cotton candy, and caramel sauce. But then she gets creative and tops hers with rainbow sprinkles and mini marshmallows. Wow. <laughs> you can choose four toppings for your customized taiyaki waffle cone, but if that's not enough sugary goodness, additional toppings are available to purchase. These are so cool looking and the kids are just eating these up. This is such a cool marketplace. In addition to a large selection of food to choose from, an open relaxing atmosphere, the most well-behaved dogs I've ever witnessed. When I still had my beagles, they would have been on the seat with me. Uh, probably the tabletop, actually. <laughs> and there's shopping available, too, at the Sistrunk Collective. The Sistrunk Collective features local artists and entrepreneurs. A plethora of work from different artists are available to purchase at the marketplace. And some of the artists also have online shops. As you can see, there's apparel, jewelry, sunglasses, home decor, to name some of the items available. Um, Neil is right, this place is awesome and there's so much variety. You could come here 10, 15, multiple times and the experience could be vastly different each time. So now we're going to head across the street for um, Neil's other suggestion, Henry's Sandwich Station. Located in Fat Village, Henry's Sandwich Station creates their irresistible sandwich creations with house smoked and cured meats along with bread prepared by local bakeries and unique artisan cheeses. Henry's also offers all-day breakfast, soups, salads, fries, and homemade desserts. The name Henry's comes from Henry Flagler, the founder of the Florida East Coast Railway, which runs right behind Henry's Sandwich Station. I'm traveling now about 280 miles north to St. Augustine, Florida to show a sculpture of the railway founder and industrialist which is located in front of the college named after him, Flagler College. 
brought customacy and Flagler's influence in St. Augustine, yet Flagler left a legacy across the state of Florida. Okay, heading south again, back to Fort Lauderdale and back to these delectable sandwiches. Making a choice is challenging and London is deciding to go with the Korean fried chicken. To attempt to describe the flavor sensation while devouring this sandwich, a sweet, spicy, crunchy, tangy, and delicious. And I am having the Cordon Bleu and doesn't it just look fantastic? The ham provides a load of flavor and then I'm enjoying the satisfying crunch from the texture of the chicken. And then the cheesy wonderfulness of smothering both the ham and chicken just the way I like it. The kids have cheeseburgers, they're quiet, not complaining and eating, which means they're enjoying it. And of course, we got fries. And let's talk more like rave about these fries. It was a toss up between salt and vinegar and garlic pesto. The owner is telling us that garlic pesto is his current favorite, so garlic pesto it is. Ah, oh, these fries. How many wonderful things could I say about these fries? The flavor combination, the thickness, you know, they're more like wedges. And with or without the dipping sauce, they are phenomenal. They're not salty, yet still absolutely delicious. That's how flavorful they are. I can eat these every day. I love these. I'm really wanting to try the other fries now too. Honestly, I'm beyond curious. Uh, but we are going to try dessert now. To be honest, we have no room for dessert, but it's happening regardless. Because <laughs> we have heard nothing but great things about these desserts. Besides our meal, we spoke to two other families and asked for recommendations for dessert places. And this is where we were pointed. So here are our goodies. London is trying the apple crumble pie. Uh, the crumble is just a taste and texture delight. It's more tart than sweet. So if that's how you prefer your apple pie, then this is just a sensational and hefty chunk of good old apple pie. My daughter is choosing the red velvet cake and since I'm the one tasked to describe these sweets, I'm having a few bites and this is definitely the best red velvet cake I have ever had. And I have had a lot of red velvet cakes in my day. It's my favorite cake actually. So this is my favorite of my favorites. It's rich and so, so creamy, just heavenly. I love it. My son is going with key lime pie. He's the opposite of us girls and loves sour. So this is just hitting the spot for him. He is a huge fan of this pie. All the cakes and pie slices are too generous for one sitting. So we have leftovers to take home and we grab more sweets for the road. A couple of cookies, red velvet. I told you I love me some red velvet <laughs> and peanut butter cup. Just like the cakes and pies, a generous size and delicious. Well, that is it for Fort Lauderdale for the present time. Uh, we had a lot of fun here and a lot of food in this video. We loved El Camino's. We loved Omnil Capote's recommendations for Sistra Marketplace and Henry's. Be sure to check out his channel in the description box for more great content. We're always, always open for suggestions. So please comment with your favorite restaurants and things to do in South Florida. And if there's somewhere you'd like to see us film, tell us. We're already looking ahead for the next year. We're thanking everyone in advance for your recommendations and suggestions. Thanks so much for subscribing, watching, getting off the couch with us in Fort Lauderdale for the past four videos. Next video, we will see you on the Panhandle in Destin, Florida. So if you haven't subscribed just yet, hit that subscribe button because it's going to be beautiful and a lot of fun. Until then, click on the video to see another one of our experiences. Thanks for watching.